Alright, so today I wanted to show you how to uh, be able to trace for foliage and switch it out so that you can interact with it dynamically. So I'm going to start by uh, just finding a place to put some foliage. Change modes here. Add something. Uh, just a random plant. Actually, let's do something taller than that. Like that one. Okay. So this guy, first I'm going to open up the plant itself, and I'm going to make sure that it has collision. So this one does. If there is no collision box, go to collision, uh, you know, add simplified, or re-import it with collision, or do whatever you want to. And then in here, down in the settings of the plant, I want to look at collision presets. Okay, and it looks like I already turned it on here, but you'll want to change it to probably something custom and let it block on whichever channel you're going to be tracing on. So for this, I'll do visibility. Check mark that since we're going to spawn them. Now I'm going to hook up just a random trace function here. So I'm just uh, assigning it to a key. on my camera and then just trace forward from it make sure this channel is the same as what your plant is colliding on Check if we've got a blocking hit. Now um, we'll take the hit component and try to cast it to an instanced static mesh component. Now to test we can say something like remove instance. Now for the index we go here and find the hit item that will give us our index. Now, uh, if you look close, you can see plants disappearing. Let's see, I'll make this uh, show our line trace so that we can kind of see better what's going on. So say I point at this plant, it disappears. And we can clear up that area there. Now if I want to switch out this plant for, say, an actor of the same size that will go in the same place, all I have to do is spawn an actor from class, and for a transform, uh, I just take this again and get the instance transform. And then you'll get the same index again. Uh, and you also want it in world space, and then you can use that to spawn your actor. So I actually have an actor called Burning Plant that I was using for these. And then I actually built in a little function in here so I could start burning them. Then I could take uh, the same thing, get static mesh, get object name. So I'll print this out so you can see. So this is a uh, one way that you could use the names to switch out for specific plants if you don't want to make an individual actor for everything. <laughs> Makes a very large fire area uh, because uh, this is actually set to chain to other actors. But if this, uh, if this mesh exists in here, they should be burning and disappearing. Yeah, you can see the broken bits as they fall down in there. Uh, so I can show in here kind of what I'm doing. 
I'm just taking that plant name and then I'm using it right here as a switch uh, that I can use to to set the static mesh of the actor and the materials and things like that. Oh, so yeah, that's the basics of how you could interact. Uh, you, you just need to get that component, cast it to the instant static mesh, and then you can get information like the transform, and you can do things like deleting them and stuff like that just using this hit item as your index. So you could also use this to switch out a plant instance for an actor that has physics on it so that when your character is passing through all the plants around them uh, turn into physics interactable actors so that they can bend and stuff like that.